All right, so next, wow, it got like loud all of a sudden. All right, so next we have Tara Wheeler and Ray, or excuse me, Roy Iverson. So they're going to talk about something, it's like a pique rogue, like Tara tried to tell me how to say that and I just gave up, so. But it's really the ethics of prosecuting an offensive security campaign. So this looks to be a very interesting talk. Tara and Roy. Hi there. Thank you so much. It is wonderful to be here tonight. Uh, this is actually uh, a talk about red team offensive ethics. So at Keep Rouge, how many of you have um, seen military doctrine and, and taken a look at why and how people do what they do in warfare? It's what we're going to talk about tonight, except internal to companies and internally to teams. Um, so hi, I am Tara Wheeler. I am a red team dork. Uh, I do this for a living. Uh, I like breaking into things. It's fun. If you'd like to talk with me a little bit more about it, you can find me on Twitter at, at Tara, and uh, my email is t at tara.org. I did not bring a bribe for the judges this evening. Oh, wait, I did. I brought you someone who's never done an InfoSec talk before. This is Roy's first time ever Trust on me. stage doing an InfoSec talk. There we yeah. are. <laughs> are we supposed him. to consume him at the end of this? How is this? Does I've he... met you, Katie. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's probably going to work out. <laughs> you need some stickers? <laughs> oh, okay. no. The, the, the stickers aren't coming out. We need a little bit of clarification out. here. So Fair enough. It, has he given a talk, or has he not given like an information security talk? To the best of my knowledge, this is your first information security talk ever All on right. stage. I like to hide. <laughs> Well, All he doesn't right. get to hide anymore. Roy, thank Have you so you much. He's the, yeah, he's the, he's uh, done a lot of work with me behind the scenes, and he's definitely the backbone and heart of this conversation, so I will let Roy continue to introduce himself. All right. Um, I'm Roy Iverson. I'm... Uh, <laughs> thank you. I've been doing this for longer than I care to admit, and I never thought my first talk would be about ethics. I see a few of my uh, former colleagues and some of my colleagues in the crowd here, so thanks for showing up. Um, yeah, uh, you can reach me at uh, Roy Iverson on Twitter. And uh, let's keep going. So why are we here tonight? What's the point? We are theoretically here to charm and edutain you, but also so that we can have a conversation about what is and isn't okay to do to our fellow people in the name of security. And the answer, hopefully, by the end of this isn't anything you want. Uh, but we'll, <laughs> we'll have more of a conversation about that as we say, why are we here tonight? So we're technical people, right? We're not philosophers. And um, you know, there are a lot of laws that tell you what you can and cannot do. But there are not a lot of things on the line or, 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 or in conferences that discuss what's right to do, what's okay to do. There's a lot of research, there's not a lot of documentation that we can go to if you have a question. A lot of us, you know, we live in basements and dark, you know, corners that people put us in because they don't want to see us. We don't get to talk to people about what's right or wrong. And, and, and we don't know who to talk to oftentimes when we, do, when we need to do this. So. So why do we red team? Why do the people in here like to break into things for a living? Well, the entire idea was always supposed to be to keep other people safe, right? That's supposed to be why we're here. And yet, sometimes the things that we choose to do internally when we are red teamers might be something that could compromise morale, integrity, legality, let's hope not. And so we're talking now, I think maybe for some of the first times, about what's right and wrong in information security. We're trying to point out flaws before other people do for us. And we're also trying to figure out where we go in the future as we go through this period of cybersecurity, of information security, maturing as a field. And so that's why we're standing here, also because we care. Roy and I started having this conversation about, I think, a year ago, and we started asking, what are some of the psychological effects of being a red teamer, of doing some of this stuff inside a company? What can you do? Can you deceive, lie, cheat, steal, kill? <laughs> what can you do in the name of security? And uh, we're going to give you some <laughs> examples a little later of, of, of some of those questions that we've you know, faced. But, um, you know, I, I want to ask you guys, I'm sure a lot of you are on uh, 
red teams here, and if, even if you're not, you're probably in the security business. So what happens if you leave your laptop unlocked in front of your team? Well, <laughs> in my office, you get an email to your boss saying, I love you, or to the team, you know, something about I resign, or, you know, I give all my stuff to Joe. And, um, you know, haha, that's funny. Uh, we never do that again. But what happens when you get back to your desk and someone tells you, like, hey, I saw a dude broke up to your laptop and he plugged a USB stick in, did something, and left? If you're me, I get to my laptop, I go, holy shit. I go through my, all, you know, I, all the logs. I probably spend four hours digging through everything, trying to figure out what happened. And then I say, you know what? I'm just going to wipe it, start from scratch, nuke it from orbit, right? That's four hours ahead. Well, what happens after that when I find out someone tells me, hey, that was just a red team exercise. We were just testing you. I'm going to be pissed, right? If it's Tara that did it, what would, you know, how would you, if you have to work with me later on, what would you, you know, think about that? One of the first things I might ask myself if I'm inside a company, and Roy is someone I theoretically in uh, some universe like working with and enjoy being around, right? One of the things that we grapple with is the fact that we have to point out other people's flaws sometimes in this job. And so if I'm pointing out that Roy's doing a bad job on security, I might stop and ask myself questions about whether or not it's near his next bonus allocation time or where we are in the promotion cycle or if the annual review is coming up. I might not target my friend to point out some of the security flaws he might be operating with, right? And so we don't want to create what you call in economics perverse incentives. We don't want to create a situation where red teamers are incentivized to not point out the, the flaws of the people that they care about inside a company. So this is why we're pointing out the difference between internal and external red teaming here. Red teaming externally, often you can just see it as flags, right? There's a, a faceless black box of a company that you're trying to break into. Inside, you see it a lot more shades of gray, right? So when you're doing a red team, let me just slide, there you go. When you're doing your exercises, right, when you're, when you're trying to, uh, to break in somewhere, whether, whether you're internal or external, where would you draw the line, right? I think everyone thinks that, you know, fishing a user whether it's an exercise or whatever, that's okay. Um, insider threat modeling, hmm. what about targeting the CEO if you work in the company? What about you know, bribery or planting incriminating evidence? I think we can all think of some of the stuff that's pretty horrifying that you might try to figure out if you could plant on somebody's computer, right? And figure out what you could get them to do in the name of breaking into a, a system. And Again, this is always about incentives. It's always about what we're, we're trying to do. And if your job is to be the best possible red teamer, to break into all the systems, to prove you can make it through all the obstacles, where do you draw the line there? I mean, I think the, the things that Roy and I discussed as we were coming up with a lot of the ideas for this talk really circled around the notion of threatening personal harm to people. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how you would model that for security in future, but in the meantime, we just started to create this big long list of what it, what the concepts were that were and weren't okay, but that we'd heard of people using before in red teaming and pen testing. So, <coughs> do you know I didn't get the joke here uh, until he showed it to me just today? It's a crash course in. Crash course. <laughs> That's why I love this guy. All right, so just because it's legal doesn't mean it's okay or ethical, right? So <laughs> ethics is complicated and it's, compli you know, it's context specific. And the problem is it's often right versus right or wrong versus wrong. We're not going to give you philosophy 101 or ethics 101 or whatever, but you know, the best illustration here is the one where you have. The, the trolley problem or the trolley dilemma or whatever you want to call it, where you have to choose between do I, you know, I'm the guy standing with the switch there in the middle and do I, you know, make the train go to the left or to the right? They're both horrible decisions. Someone's going to die. It's just five people or one person. Maybe if they're all Hitler, you can do what the little toddler did and you run over all of them. But anyway. Uh, when we say, when we say, this guy, he needs to talk. Am I right? Is he killing it on his first talk in information security so far? 
That's what I'm talking about. Hitler, toddlers, and memes, you're going to do fine. Okay. Uh, so one of the things we talked about with this is we didn't want to go too deeply into the origins of ethics. Um, if, you'll, if you'll pardon me for just 30 seconds on this one. It, what we're talking about now doesn't just matter internally, externally, and third-party pen testing companies. We're building a framework now for how we operate in information security. And the question of what is and isn't okay to do when you're conducting an offensive campaign goes to the Second Lateran Council in 1196 when Pope Innocent III said you're not allowed to use crossbows on Christians, right? So the question of what we are and aren't allowed to do isn't just one that we're grappling with now. It's been coming all this time, and we've been working on competence at the expense sometimes of developing the ethical framework around it, and we think tonight we have a solution for you. So, you know, dilemmas that you face when you're doing an exercise, you know, you've got responsibilities to different groups. And, you know, as a red team member, you have an ethical responsibility to your organization or your client to make sure that you tell them what their true risks are, right? If you can find a risk, find it, prove it, tell them about it. But as a colleague, you have an ethical responsibility to not harm them mentally, physically, or professionally. And as a member of the security team, you have a responsibility to that team and to your profession as a whole to build trust. The kind of trust that we build with each other is absolutely key to figuring out how to create the safe space to mentally model the kinds of things we can't do in real life and yet still have to simulate when it comes to uh, tabletop and theoretical exercises. So the theorist in me says that I can model everything. I don't need to do an exercise. I can just look around and tell you, okay, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, you suck there. But I think everyone in this room, even if it's, you've just run a Nessa scan and try to send it to an executive, they go, nah, like, not, this would never happen, right? You've got to prove it to them. That's why we're doing the red team exercises. That's why we're doing the pen tests. And so, you know, some of these things that we're talking about, you may not want to do because they're too bad. Like, you know, the, 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 some of the, the har physical harming people are threatening them. And yet we also know from practical experience in this room, sometimes you have to actually prove that something can be exploited before someone will believe you, right? How often have you drawn a PowerPoint up, but they wouldn't believe you until it was, I, I love the expression, I think it was, um, I think it was Mr. Bot once said, who said, uh, PCAPs or get the fuck out, right? Show me what's happening out there, right? And yet at the same time, uh, often you have to show someone I can break in and demonstrate it to them first. And so sometimes it's hard to get that point across without the proof of concept, no? Yep, so, you know, we're here to tell you about that, you know, talk about or start a discussion about that there is an ethical boundary somewhere. We should talk about it. We're not here to tell you what the answer is to those questions. They're context specific. What works in a large company may not work in a small company. If I'm in a large company and a huge security team, you know, I'm not gonna necessarily worry about what some person in a different country thinks about me, if there are, you know, even if they work for the same company. But if I'm in a small team, small company, and the person that I'm trying to, to dupe is sitting a desk away from me, I might think twice about what I'm doing to that person, and I might not get what I should do, be doing for my company or for the organization done. That may be something that you want to do for an external team. An internal team might be better at. Mm -hmm. Well, and we know that there are three essential characteristics of a, of a red team, right? You can, be, you can do internal, you can do external, and you can do tabletop. But the first two are actually demonstrating whether or not something can be done. And the final one, a tabletop exercise, demonstrates whether or not something could be handled theoretically, right? Now, one thing we know is, and, and at least Roy and I have come to agree, is that there are certain kinds of deception that are necessary to test security that are okay for a third-party pen test to engage in. Um, but one great example I've, I've had, for, for those of you that don't know, I'm married to Deviant Olaf, who's sitting here in the front row here. Um, he's, hi, baby. The, <laughs> uh, the, 
there we are. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I've, I've talked with him about, his, he runs a physical covert entry team and, and gets into companies. One of the conversations Roy and I have been Except developing out over the last... The airport. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that Roy and I have been developing out is uh, I know very specifically he and, and many other very ethical physical pen testers will create contractual language to specify that, for instance, a receptionist who lets people into a building or a security guard who is the point of entry for a company isn't personally blamed. And if you're a third-party company, you can often do that and have it be successful. Internally, it's a little harder to do that. It's harder to not know who you're targeting and use that institutional knowledge to get in. So what does an internal team do better than anything else? Probably modeling an insider threat, right? So insider threat modeling is what we internally do the best. And that's why we've got that differentiation between those two teams. All right, so a little bit of a demo fail here, but because um, I can't test it from in here. So we have this uh, site that will be up shortly redteamsurvey.com, where you have a bunch of questions. It's one page, one question basically, check a bunch of boxes, where any of you who want can basically go in and say, you know, I think this is too far. We'd love for all of you to go there. We'll post it on Twitter too when, this, when it works so that uh, we can hear from you. We want to know where, what do you think is too far. So in addition. And in addition, uh, don't just fill out that one survey question. We're going to take that information and decide what people think and provide results on what people think is going too far when it comes to what you can, should be able to do in terms of red team exercises. And we'll post those results to uh, Red Team Ethics at GitHub. That's our, uh, our organization and repo for this work here. And one of the great parts about this is as we are posting this information, you can find there the very, very nascent um, first time ever we think we're doing this, uh, Red Team Ethical Framework. There'll be a mission statement as well as a list of serious questions to consider and go over with your team. In addition, you can take a look at our slide deck, which will be posted there as well. And of course, we also have some thank yous. All right, uh, just wrapping it up here. Thank you to all of our colleagues that helped us with this and our companies for letting us do it. We also have some sources on the slide decks, a lot of good research. And uh, if you have any questions for us, you can reach us at Roy Iverson or Tara or this special address, Shmoo at RedBillingEthics.com. Thank you. Yeah. So we had to upgrade to two chairs. So. Hey, uh, anybody in the audience have a battery in USB-C? <laughs> and is not from the NSA? <laughs> oh, there's, oh, a yeah. there's, there's a trusted battery. Yeah, okay. I'm not, not licking toads. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I got, a, I got a whole bunch of... No oh, geez. Not that big bottle. Either, either orifice. Damn. No, 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 no. Give me my boot. Are you oh, those are eyeballs. Yeah, give me eyeballs. Um, so I got a whole bunch of notes. I'll try to get them in order here. Uh, the fact that it's your first talk, awesome. Good job, first talk, right? Yes. Uh, the fact that you did provide a bribe eventually, great, yes. by proxy. Proxy bribe, well, is accepted, yes. Uh, your affirmation of love on stage, extra points. Got to do that. Uh, Quoting the sources at the end of your slides, awesome, thank you so much. Please, please everybody else do that. I like sources, even if it's in the comments, whatever, put the links down. Um, don't just get up and spout a bunch of stuff that nobody can uh, then go look up. The fact that you had two presenters and were not totally awkward on stage, very good. That's a hard skill to match. Uh, or anybody else, if you're gonna do a talk with two presenters, uh, you need to practice and get the handoff right so it's not super awkward. Uh, a lot of times talks fail completely just because they have two com presenters. Don't think you only have to speak half the time and it's going to be great. It doesn't always work that well. This went really well. Um, your comment on getting stuff fixed, uh, that's kind of been my mantra throughout my entire career. So extra points on that. Um, I think you phrased it differently, but that's what I took out of it. Uh, but, uh, uh, you mentioned rules of engagements and I think you mentioned get out of jail free cards. Those are super, super duper important. Um, I work in offensive security as well. 
Uh, and although you have rules of engagement and a get out of jail free card, it doesn't mean you can do whatever you want, right? So the fact that you guys brought this, top, this topic here, it's, this is a super, super duper monster important topic. And it's only now starting to get traction. I think this is the first time I've actually heard a talk of it. I've heard people whispering about it in the halls, but not bringing this forward. So thank you for bringing this forward. We run into this problem all the time at my job. Uh, where we are doing engagements and we're like, well, gee, can we really do that? Or we did it and then we're like, oh, now what do we do, right? Did we cross a line? So this is an important topic. This is something we definitely need to figure out as an industry as we move forward. Um, and I think that's all I have. So you're next. All right. Oh, yeah, it's really loud. <laughs> So no, I want to echo exactly what you said. I'm going to start with that, the fact that I, I too have an organization that works heavily with rules of engagement and I, I want to keep that conversation going. I'm not going to dwell on it, but we do, as we're maturing as an industry and as, as people, I hope we also are bringing up people that might not know the common sense. Think about that for a minute, especially with rules of engagement, even though whoever's signing off on it, if the CEO didn't sign off on it, going after his kids is not going to be good for anybody. Just saying. But, so, I had to augment my, my voting criteria because it is kind of known that Tara and Deviant have better elevated tastes in the liqueur department. So, I'm kind of taking this in living color style. So, uh, the black hat thing, I had to do that. So, uh, I would have liked to have seen Roy talk a little bit more. So, that gets a Roy, what? <laughs> the slides were beautiful, two snaps. I will give you guys so much credit. I don't know how much prep you guys did on the kind of, you, you touched and danced around and tickled ethics in it, and you didn't go deep into it. It looks like that's where you're this eventually gonna go into. So, mm-hmm, see what you did there. And in regards to your sources, you get three snaps in a circle. Overall, great. Great talk. Congratulations on your first talk on stage at Shmoo, if not anywhere else. Yay. Thank you. Okay, so, yeah, absolutely. Plus 10 for security talk for Roy. I agree with that. Um, so, what I was confused about was why are we talking about the ethics of what you do professionally that you get paid to do for your own company when the enemy doesn't care, right? So, like, who, who you're trying to model does not play by these rules. And so that, was, so that was my, you know, that was my kind of, like, counterbalance to, like, wait a minute, where is that piece of you're, mo you're trying to model reality, so why are you constraining yourself, especially when you allegedly work there, right? I do get the social elements of having to carry on and work with these people ongoing, so that was a well-made point. And so uh, I gave, oh, plus 1,000 on the cute, like, div love shout-out, because I think supportive partners are so key for everyone. Every human being deserves a supportive partner, so that was awesome. And... Um, Okay, plus 100,000 for sources. And, I do. Nothing. And, uh, hey, I'm still judging here. All right. So, the bits about, so I'm plus and minus on the fact that you guys are trying to create this framework, because again, I'm still confused as to what is the purpose when you're really modeling the enemy. And the enemy is, you know, honey badger. Enemy don't care, you know? Enemy don't care. But I like the fact that you put it up on GitHub. So that's why plus or minus. It's like, I'm still confused as to why, but it's a plus that you're putting it up on GitHub. You're offering it up for yourselves and the community to contribute to it. And that, I think, is going gonna, is gonna to result in some good stuff. So um, great talk. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.